All right, guys, doing another CRT video, but you'll notice there's no CRT in this image. I have not lost the biscuit. I do have a plan. So a lot of people have been asking me to do a video on how to service CRTs, and that's what you're getting. Uh, I got a CRT over here that does need service, and I'm debating whether I'm going to use it or not, so I'm taking the opportunity to, uh, while I'm servicing that TV, show you guys you know all the tricks I know basically and I don't need to do everything on this CRT it, it needs geometry and convergence adjustments but I'm gonna show you some other stuff I'm gonna show you everything I know basically and uh, these are the tools I use this is all you need man all this all this is cheap so first thing we're gonna clean it out I mean compressed air and any old ratty old paintbrush and if you don't have compressed air you can buy a can air or you can just use the paintbrush. And then after we clean it out, we're gonna, I'm gonna show you guys how to do a uh, degauss. We're not fucking degauss. What the hell is it called? I'm gonna discharge it, man. This is my discharge tool here. And all this is, it's a, a long screwdriver, flathead. You want a long one. And I just electric tape. Sorry about that car, guys. I just electric tape some wire I had lying around. This is just like speaker wire. Just, you know, this needs to attach to ground on the, you know, on the tube somewhere, I'll show you that. And we're gonna discharge it because I'm gonna show you how to add dialectic grease. That's what this is. How to add dialectic grease underneath the anode cap. And in order to do that, you do need to discharge it first. If this is a Sony. You probably don't even need to discharge it. It probably auto discharges, but I always check I mean, safety first, hail Lord safety, right guys? And it's good to know how to discharge anyways, but for everything else, you don't need to discharge it. Um, this is my equipment I use here, my magnet setup to add magnets to the tube. And these are convergence strips you use to shove these under the yoke. I'll show you guys that, but people think these are magic. Like, oh man, where are you buy them at? You can make these guys. This, all this is, this, that's just double-sided tape. There's some double-sided tape right there, Home Depot, like three bucks. A piece of cardstock, that's all this long thing is, and a magnet. It's just any old cheap ceramic magnet, and you can buy a strip of these. This is like five bucks, and you just cut a piece off, put it on some cardstock, and put some double-sided tape. You've made your own convergence strip. I mean, don't overthink it. And then I like these. These are square magnets. You know, just cheap ceramic square magnets. Five bucks Home Depot. All this you can find at Home Depot. And this is a wedge you can use to shove under the yoke. I've never actually done it, but I've kept a couple in case I needed to. But yeah, the magnet, the square ones are good because you can put it on the tube, right? You're going you're gonna to put double-sided tape on it. You're going to put it to the tube. And then that's going to do something. It's going to change the image. And if you want to do fine tuning, these square ones, you can rotate it like that, and that'll have a completely different effect. Or you can turn them like this. Whereas if this was a round magnet, turning it wouldn't change anything. So that'll be our magnet fun we're going to play with. And then screwdriver, Phillips screwdriver, we're going to use this to change pots, and that's going to change geometry and convergence and focus. You can do a lot with just a screwdriver. And then we got the remote. Get into the service menu and we can adjust geometry in there. Great for things like horizontal position, vertical position, uh, screen tilt, there's a setting in there. If you, you know, this, this CRT has a, a menu setting, user menu, where you can do the screen tilt like this kind of thing. But not all of them do. Uh, the small ones in particular typically don't. But you can get into the service menu and change them. And that's going to be about it, and it's going to be geared towards, this video is about working on these flat screen Sonys. And these a lot of times do need some work. They typically do have, or often have, convergence and geometry issues. So it's really good to know how to do this. Um, the tricks I'm going to show you will apply to other CRTs. Uh, this particular CRT here is a, uh, let me adjust the focus. KV36FV26, 
but this is gonna, you know, pretty much all of these flat screens are the same. Uh, FV Teen Series, FV 300s, FV 200s, FV 120s, this is a 26, they're all very similar. This one was made in 2000, and because this sucker is so freaking big, there's stuff I gotta do where I'll be turning a screwdriver in here, and I'll be trying to look at the screen, but you can't get around you know, it's the damn thing's too big. 36s and 32s are too big for that. So I got old Fuzzy coming over, and he's going to help me tomorrow. He's going to turn the screwdriver. All right, so first thing I did was I did a color correct on it. And I got a video on that, how to correct color, hue, and brightness. And you just got to go check out that video. I'm not going to get into it here. But you do that first because if you go in like and try to do some like check out your colors let's see here there's a we need like a white RGB screen like something you want to do is come in and check out your white RGB screen and, and make sure this looks white but if you haven't already done your color correct you might think it looks whack because your hue's off or something. So first thing you do is that. I already went and did all that. Now, I can make this look any like anything. Like I'm just turned it blue by adjusting the white balance on my phone. And now I just, you know, made it look more white. You're just going to have to take my word for it. But this looks pretty good right here. Uh, I wouldn't say it's perfect. There really isn't any, like, you, what you're looking for on a white screen is if there's, like, some pink or some red to it or some blue or green tint to it. And I'm not really seeing any of that. So, there's a little bit of discoloration, like, we're, like in the corner here. It's a little bit off. But probably just to degauss, we'll fix that. So, we'll just degauss it by turning it on and off. You hear a little quiet bwong on this set. This set has a wimpy bwong. And it looks like there's still just a little bit off in there. I might have to put a magnet there or something, but it's not bad at all. And then uh, after checking white, I'll go in and I'll check the red. And again, like, you know, I can adjust the white balance and make this red look like anything in this video. But uh, this red looks really good. And what you're looking for in the red is you don't want it to be orangish. Uh, that's a common issue is there'll be like a little bit of yellow or I guess green. I don't know what it is, but your red looks orange. And this red right here looks good. And I'm not very good at looking at green or blue. Like I, I just don't have any experience like looking at those and noticing that they're off really. But if you look at the red and the red's good, probably the green and the blue are good too. So, okay, we checked that out get out of here and now let's pull up a grid uh, the buttons on 240p test suite are not very intuitive and uh, I guess something I should mention for doing all of this like having a PS2 let's see I got one down here that's what's hooked up right now I got my PS2 hooked up and it's just the easiest cuz PS2 is like with free McBoot, you got all kinds of options. Like I have, this is a SNES emulator running 240p test suite. Um, it hooks up to component natively, so you don't have to worry about like trying to like bring in an RGB transcoder or anything to these TVs. So the PS2 is the easiest for for troubleshooting and, and doing all this diagnostic stuff. So yeah, anyways, pull up a grid. Uh, let's see here, what's going on? Okay. This is the wrong grid. Let's get this grid going. Okay, finally got a grid on. Okay, let's pull the screen up. Okay, so looking at it, this is like our baseline here, looking for issues. The whole screen 
Like this whole side of the screen has this kind of bowing warp to it is the problem I'm noticing. There's a little bit of bow here and a tiny one up here. But we're gonna what we're gonna shoot for is getting this whole side of the screen like less bowed. And if you look at like there's a couple lines up here that look like they're actually not bowed, like maybe someone went in and corrected it. I don't know, that's just a guess. See what else here. I wonder if I can just zoom in. So there is a convergence issue with this TV. And you can see the green gun is, the green is above the white and the red is below. And that's like throughout the lines on this TV. Like not just this line, but like all the lines, not all of them, but most of them. So we'll try to correct that. You gotta correct that with pots. You're not using a magnet to correct all the lines. And then if you come over to the corner, like this line right here, that's supposed to be white. And it's just a mess. So the whole convergence up and down on this end of the screen is bad. This line's really bad too. Like look at these. These are just white solid lines. That's how they're supposed to look. And we're going to need to correct that. And my hope is to use this as a Tate setup. And then if I do, I'll be spending a lot of time on the bottom of the screen. And that's going to be the bottom. So we definitely need to correct that. And then if you look at the bottom down there, Get out of this zoom. That's out of focus down there, but that's okay if the corner's out of focus. How you can tell it's out of focus and it's not convergence is the colors are still the same. The red is all still red. The blue's not off of it, but it still looks blurry versus over here, like that looks sharp. But the focus in the center looks good which is much more important than the focus in one corner. So another test is the scroll test. Let's pull this up. So if somebody came in here and made a bunch of corrections, they might have like overall made the horizontal lines like straight by like adjusting and recorrecting throughout. So there might be a bunch of warps in the line even though on average it's straight. So a grid, it might actually not look so bad. But then you pull up the scroll test and you'll notice all those warps if there's warping. And this, this set doesn't have any of that, but this is gonna come in handy after we make a bunch of adjustments. Cause you can have a, a tendency to get like, you're like locked in and just like blinded from looking at the grid for so long that you think your grid looks good and you like kind of lose touch with reality. So you, you pull up these these patterns here after you make a bunch of adjustments. So baseline, it looks good. Okay, one more baseline test is pulling up a game. And this is a theme as I go through and we work on the geometry on this particular TV. What you do is you correct geometry in a grid and then you check it in a scrolling test. And then I like to check it in a game as well. And I just keep going back and forth through those three things and making sure they're all good. Uh, a theme I'll notice is you do most of your work on the grid and you, you think your grid's good, but then you'll pull up a scrolling test and find out, oh, I made too many corrections and it's wavy. Or you'll pull up your game and it does something doesn't look right. And this is what's really important is that your game looks right. So like, I'm using Mega Man here because it has this menu. I mean, any kind of role-playing game with the menu will work, but you know, we have this block kind of straight lines, all these lines to compare. And we just notice the same thing that we do when we're on the grid is, you know, there's this kind of bowing over here. And then also like looking at this bridge, the bridge looks bowed. And it's really, I think just this side of the bridge is bowed. I think this side's fine. There might be a little bit of an optical illusion where the whole thing looks bowed. And it's really just the one side. And that this is gonna be our mission on this TV, is try to get rid of that bow. 
And then also, um, like I was showing you guys, the convergence is off. And what that manifests in the game, on the right hand side where the convergence is off, that enemy looks slightly blurrier over there than if I bring him into the center of the screen. And it's only slightly. Like mind you, the convergence was really bad when we looked at our grid. But when you're in game, it does you like you, you have a hard time struggling to notice. You really have to look to notice that he is less sharp on the edge than he is when he's right in front of you. And that's the thing, like people get a little bit too involved on convergence in my opinion. Like they want all the corners perfect and they complain if their BVM has any convergence off. You don't notice it. Like even terrible convergence is somewhat hard to notice and it usually only manifests as you know, slightly blurriness in a certain area. If you have a white screen, it'll stand out a lot more. All right, so I'm gonna go through the service menu with you. At least what I know about it, and I'm no pro. How you get into it is you press, you turn the TV off, and you gotta do all this kind of quickly. So it's turn it off, display five, volume up and then power it back on and you should get in the service menu and it worked you can tell because it's got that green shit on the top vph position video for service it says service um there's a lot to this and i'm going to put a link below that has more information but i've come to learn that links don't last forever so i'm going to give you the basics as we go through this to navigate to the next option you want to change like right now we're changing H pose it says on the top left which is the H position and it does this you can see the screen move you know slide around like that and H position is under the VP setting like see how it says VP above that and all this VP stuff is like geometry it's all geometry stuff. I say that, but it's not true because now I'm into color stuff like this RBLK, LBLK. I'm not sure actually, I could be wrong about that. Okay, this is definitely cover, color. B, DRV, B drive, green drive, R drive. Anything where it's like RGB is gonna be color stuff. R cut, G cut, B cut. I know those are just colors. Um. But anyway, yeah, like VP like is the setting that we're going to use basically. Anything that isn't in VP, like I scroll over here. Now we're in AP. This is like volume, bass, and treble. We're not going to mess with none of that. I don't think there's anything that is out of this VP that we're going to mess with. And like see how it says here, like all this info? This is like the beginning of the screen. And you navigate like one and oh, I'm sorry it's one and four are what you use to navigate so we're headed in the one direction now and then back to the beginning is pressing the four button and if you want to change a value like H position you use three and six so I'm hitting three and it's moving the position over and then six is moving it back um, now there's often and this is maxed out right here so I can't move the screen over to the right anymore, and I would like to. And there's one more setting I found in here that allows me to move it over a little bit. Um, often there'll be an H freak. It'll say like F-R-E-Q, and it's like H frequency, and that'll allow you to move it over too. So I'll, you know, I'm going to mess with that at a certain point. And I already went through this menu and didn't really find anything. I found one value that I changed one that helped, but I'm not finding what I need to... Um, fix this Boeing we have. I'm not finding that in here. But we'll go through and I'll show you what changing some values do. So say you come in here and you just start messing your screen up, right? We're just gonna whack it out, right? Hey, now the screen is jacked up. And say you forgot to write everything down. You hit zero and then enter and it's going to default back to the settings that were at the beginning. And that's something I use quite a bit. So I'll come in here and I'll mess around with all this stuff. I won't write nothing down. I'll just come in here and what's this value do? Okay, pin amp. 
and I'll start messing with it. Okay, that's what it does. And I don't even bother writing anything down. I'm just messing with stuff. You know, seeing what things do, vertical position. And then after I've kind of figured out like which settings in here actually help the particular issue I have, you know, then I might start writing stuff down and like fine tuning. But until I do like zero and enter, I'm right back to where I was. So say you want to save your settings. You hit mute and then you'll see it, it'll say write and then enter. And now I just saved the settings. Like I just overwrote all the settings. So if I had saved it when it was all jacked up, like, you know, like this, I'd be screwed right now. But I didn't, I saved it right after I defaulted. So it just rewrote the same thing over again. Um, and that's basically it as far as um, navigation that I have to tell you. There is more stuff, like I said, I'll put a link down below. Let's go back to the beginning. Okay, see how it has all this version info? Now we're at the beginning of the menu. So like H position, I already showed you that one. H size, this is gonna, how big everything is. You know, Vibo, you know, it's bowing the screen. See, I wish I had like, just the left hand side bow because that's what I need I need like horizontal like it I need like an H bow on the left is what I need you see like all this stuff does stuff and I'm, I'm not even trying and describe it you really just need to get in here on your own and start messing with stuff figuring out what it does you know that's what I did Oh, like I said, the link I'm going to put below, I'm going to default back to normal because it looks whack. Um, the link I'm going to have below will actually like try to describe some of this stuff. Um, I think there's one called Trot that I was looking for and I didn't find it in here. And Trot will actually will fix your angle. Like if your screen, the whole thing is tilted like this, Trot will bring it back in. And, but this this particular TV, um, it has that option somewhere in here. Oh shit, that looks like crap. Where is it? Audio channel setup, tilt correction. It has its own tilt correction. So we're at zero. See, it does that on its, just in the user menu. So you don't need to do that. Uh, you could always actually physically grab the yoke, and we'll talk about that at a certain point. And I have had to do that on TVs. Um, but there's no trot, I noticed, in this service menu. Um, and that's probably because it's it's in the user menu, so they didn't bother to put it in here. V position, that's the vertical position. It says vertical position, but it actually does something weird. Like, it actually, like, tilts the whole screen like this doing like this kind of thing so I, I try not to mess with vertical position because it's not just moving the screen up it's it's doing some wonkiness so zero enter back to where I was oh yeah I forgot to mention like the values you're changing um, you, you can see there's a number you know at the top there like it's changing so I'll go back to the beginning so it's at five by whatever it was when I came in the menu you know and, and if you're gonna get in here it's always like good advice to like write this stuff down before you start saving before you start saving values you need to write some stuff down um, what you can do in the service menu is basically this geometry stuff um, that's and there's color stuff and you can change color. All this other stuff in here, I have not found useful at all. I say that, but there are special exceptions. I know with the uh, XBR250, I think it's HSOC. I forget what it is, but there is some like esoteric setting that you need to change on a lot of them, or you get some weird banding issues on the screen. You know, but I'm covering, trying to cover basics, but I am kind of getting in the nitty gritty. So this stuff, B drive. R cut. This is all color stuff, and I'm not really going to get into that. I have I have another video on that where I mess with that a little bit, and you can check that out. I will say, 
you want to find the guns in here, R on, G on, B on. So if you want a blue screen, like to adjust color, um, you want just a blue, just blue. So you turn the, um, I just turned the red and green guns off and now I have, I have a blue screen and that comes in handy. And that's about it in here. All right, guys, a word on taking precautions when working on these. CRTs are potentially dangerous when they're powered on like this or just sitting there. You know, I don't really recommend anybody open them up, anybody like me. You know, you probably shouldn't open these and work on them yourself. You know, I'm a millennial. I grew up like most millennials. I got a helicopter mom. You know, it's coronavirus days. I wear a... I wear two masks when I go outside, you know, hail Lord safety, all that. But, um, so I won't work on these. I'm not going to turn a wrench behind that CRT. You know, I could get hurt, but you know, what you got to do is you got to get yourself a boomer. Like my dad, he grew up in a different time. Like they're crazy, man. Like he works on his own car. Like if his house, like remember like a year ago, his roof had a leak. So he actually reshingled it himself. Like, you know, they do dangerous stuff like climb on ladders and, you know, like to him working on the CRT, he's not even worried about it. So uh, say hi, old fuzzy. I say plug that sucker in, throw it in the bathtub and let's get to work. <laughs> All right, so this thing's energized and you do need to make your adjustments with the TV energized. I guess you could make an adjustment turn the tv off walk around to the front and look and see what it did and do that i don't think that's practical like i said this tv is too large for me to adjust back here and see what i'm doing in the front so my dad's going to help anything metal when this is energized you do not want to touch it is energized it can shock you so like i've been shocked by that right there that deflection coil <laughs> back off old fuzzy um, but yeah, so you don't want to touch anything metal in here. That coil seems to get in the way and like we'll be putting magnets in. Like you do got to touch this glass to put magnets on it while it's energized. And I will be putting magnets in here and shoving wedges or um, convergence strips. And while you're doing that, you, you know, you can touch the plastic, but you can't touch that metal. You really don't want to do that. Um, it's not going to kill you. It's just, I don't think it's got the full voltage like you do under the anode cap going to that. It's probably just like 110 out of your light socket. I've been shocked by it. It feels like getting shocked from your light socket. No fun. But it's not fun. You don't want to do it. Um, I think that is it for my, my Hail Lord safety rant. All right, guys. So we're going to do a little bit of CRT anatomy first. So this is the tube, the screen. This thing is energized right now. Um, that is the uh, anode cap that's plugged into the uh, flyback right here. You don't want to fuck with that stuff. That stuff has a high voltage. That's the dangerous part. That's why it's got a red line on it. However, we do need to make some adjustments on the flyback. If you come in here, you can see two, um, what are they called? There's two pots. What was I calling these, Dad? Potentiometers, uh, right here. This one's got tape on it. That's the high voltage, also known as the screen adjust. It will make the screen um, like brighter. It, uh, it'll do it a similar adjustment to if you adjust brightness or contrast. However, it's more pronounced. And I've only adjusted that once on one TV, and I had a hard time getting it back how I wanted. So we're actually, this is the only potentiometer we're not gonna mess with today. But uh, I have heard that it's useful if you have an old CRT that's aging. You know, you can do a rejuve. You can turn the contrast up. You can try turning that up too. We're not gonna fuck with that. Now above that, there's a potentiometer here. Let me turn the ISO on my camera up. There we go. You can see this potentiometer right there. That's a focus adjustment. We will be turning that. And this CRT, like most of these uh, Wegas, has a second focus and on this I believe one of these is going to be a vertical focus and the other one's going to be horizontal other CRTs like my Mitsubishi has an inner and outer focus which is actually more useful 
I'd say most other CRTs only have one focus knob. Now, in addition to those, um, we have these up here. You can get a screwdriver in there. H trap, Y C H, and T L V. I believe one of those is a geometry H trap, probably, and then these other two are convergence adjustments, and we'll be adjusting that. Now, I did notice another pot on this board. There's another pot where it says H trap right in this hole right here. There's another screw we can adjust, and we'll be adjusting that as well. Okay, so old Fuzzy's behind the TV ready to make adjustments. We're going to turn the uh, focus knob on the flyback first. And then um, what I was calling a focus on the neck board actually isn't a focus knob. It adjusts geometry and convergence simultaneously. And then the other three um, screws that were on top right over the deflection coil, we're going to turn those. One was a H trap and the other one is Y something in the middle and then the one on the other side it says uh, I believe it's uh, TVL and then there's another screw that's um, another potentiometer I showed you that also says H trap that's on the neck board and we're going to start by uh, turning the focus one thing to say before we start turning this this isn't like when you're making service menu adjustments when you're making adjustments in the service menu, you can hit zero and enter and it's gonna go back to default. When you make these adjustments, this is analog, there's no going back to default. So once you get into this, you've opened a can of worms and you're, you can make your TV worse. Like right now, I've been screwing around with it and my, my geometry is worse and my con convergence is worse, it's all warped. So I'm gonna to have to sit here and keep messing with it until I can get it at least as good as it was. I think I can actually improve it. But what I'm getting at is once you start turning these, there's no going back. So go ahead and my dad's gonna demonstrate what the focus adjustment does. Go ahead and turn the focus on the flyback, dad. So you see how it gets blurry? Everything on the whole screen gets blurry. Now go back. Oh, he went the other way. It got too blurry in the other direction. Now try to get it in the center. Okay, right there is pretty good. Okay, go back the other way and stop. So now he has the the he has the focus pretty much back where it was. This one didn't have bad focus. And one thing to note is that focus is just focus over the whole screen. So you might get the center dialed in, but then your corner can be out of focus. And you know, there's just kind of a give and take and. I typically try to have the center in focus and not worry about the sides too much. Okay, so now go ahead and adjust that um, that knob, the second knob I told you about, Dad, that I on, thought was a... On the top? Um, or the little bitty one? This one right here. Oh, all right. So this, this was the knob I was calling the second focus, but on this TV, it's not another focus. It's It adjusts convergence and... Really? So see what he did? It's like vertical convergence. Maxed out clockwise. Okay, go back. Maxed out counterclockwise. And then go center. 270 total throw. Okay, go back the other way slowly and I'll tell you when to stop. Original position. Go back the other way, stop. So that's about perfect. That's a slight adjustment over how we found it. So we can try, and that's adjusting your, your vertical convergence. And we have some vertical convergence off in the corner. So we might, we're gonna mess with that. It's actually already better than it was. And that's looking pretty good. Now this, now that we made this side better though, now this side is worse. Like you can see this side was actually perfect before and now you can look and you can see it's off now. So we're just gonna try and split the difference between those two. And you just gotta mess with it until you, know, you get something you're happy with. Okay, go ahead and move up to those screws on the top, Dad. We'll do the, this one to start with. I'm starting right to left. Okay, so this one says H-trap on it. 
And I got to back up because it does a very global weird adjustment. So go ahead and go all one way. I can't. Oh, there we go. Couldn't get the screwdriver in. Ready? Yeah. Clockwise. Full on. Okay, go the all the way the other way. If you look, again, guys, again, you, you can two, see the corners bowing. 270 degrees of throw. If you pay attention to these corners. Okay, go ahead the other way. There's 90. There's 115. That's right in the center. Go all the way one way. All the way one way. Clockwise. You can see it like pushes it this way. And now go all the way the other way. It's kind of like pulling on the corners of a blanket. Now go in the middle, Dad. 90. Right there. That's not the middle. So that's actually kind of bowed there's, it right here. There's the middle. Okay, go back the other way a little bit. Stop. We'll just leave it there for now. That's not where we found it. <laughs> that's all right. We'll we'll mess with it later. Okay. Um. Okay. Now we're gonna go to that knob in the middle. Now this one is adjusting. Could I, this one, I, I knew this one was convergence actually. So go ahead and adjust that one in the middle. It's a convergence knob, but it also affects geometry a little bit. Ready? Yeah. Clockwise. This is the one in the middle? Yes. Okay, go the other way. Counterclockwise. Yeah, it's really more of a geometry adjustment. Like if you look in this corner, okay, go all the way the other way. Watch the convergence. See, it just goes, it fixes it if he does it that way, but then it messes up this corner. And it was nowhere near center point. So now go all the way the other way. And all the way the other way. So this one's really affecting these corners here. And it's affecting geometry and convergence. We'll zoom out and now go all the way one way. And then all the way the other way. Okay, now let's try to find a decent center. Let's go for the center point? Yeah. A little bit more that same way. That's the center point. Go a little bit more in that same direction. Um, we'll just leave it there for now. That's good enough. That's about where we found it. Yeah, actually, it's looking pretty good just messing with it like that. Okay, we'll move on to that that last one on top of the deflection coil. The, we're talking about those three screws on the top. The one we just did was the one that said Y, and this one says like TLV on it, TVL. Um, and it does more of the same, just kind of geometry. TLV. TLV. YCH, TLV, and H trap. Okay, so we're doing the TLV one. So go ahead and do that one. I'm helpful. <laughs> Thanks, Dad. Are you fishing for fishing for gratitude? No, I'm always fishing for chicks. Oh, I'm <laughs> sorry I asked. <laughs> anyway, so go ahead, turn it all the way one way. Let's see what it does. You were really close to full clockwise. So that was an eighth turn, quarter turn, half turn, three quarter turn. This one turns almost a full turn. I need so you have a lot of play in it? Yeah, this one has more play than the other. Okay, go ahead, do it again. Okay, so this one does a lot of different things. It does a geometry adjustment, guys. It also adjusts convergence. And I'm seeing down here, Okay, go ahead and turn it all the way one way. You can see what it's doing down there. See it's adjusting convergence. Now go all the way, keep going the other direction. I stand corrected, it is a three quarter throw. Okay, so there's stop a half, right there. There's a half. Stop right there. There's a half throw. So that's good for now. That one seems to be adjusting the, the, the convergence this way. I guess we would call it vertical convergence, which in, earlier I was saying how there was a green line on the top here. We've actually gotten rid of it. The green line is now dialed in. However, there is a little bit of a red line below the white now. 
there's a red line here. So that I can dial in to try to get that, to get that, to get this convergence set. Um, so it's really a convergence measure, or a, excuse me, adjustment, but you will notice just adjusting convergence also affects the geometry on the set too. So um, anyways, we got one more screw to turn and this is like a little tiny screw. I'll just go ahead and show you guys. So go ahead and um, there's a little tiny screw on the back of the board here that says H trap. Can you see it, Dad? It's right there. So right in there, there's a screw. Show the picture. And then. Well, that's where we're at. And, and tell what it says. So he got it. It says H trap on it. I forget what it does. Okay, you ready? I am. So go ahead and adjust it. Oh. Okay, so this is making a geometry adjustment. That's full lock. Okay, go all the way the other way. There's full lock counterclockwise. Go all the way the other way. They're all at roughly a three quarter okay. row. So I'm having a hard time showing this adjustment on the camera, guys, but it is a geometry adjustment. Um, go ahead and go to the middle. Middle. It's like pulling the corners. All right, so that's going to be it. Um, we're going to move on and mess with some magnets. Okay, we're going to start playing with magnets, guys. And if you look, there's already some magnets on the tube. You see those right there? Oh, by the way, this thing is energized, but um, so we got to be careful. Those are magnets just stuck down with double-sided tape. These guys right here. And then you can see there's a convergence strip shoved under the neck board down there too, this guy. And then this part right here, this black part is just double-sided tape. And then on the other end of the strip is a magnet. So I have my own convergence strips. And so this is kind of the principle here is this coil, this metal wire is magnetized. And this TV uses magnets to produce an image and, and direct the beam. And we're gonna try and tweak that to, to optimize the image. So the closer you get to this with the magnet, so if you put a magnet way out here, where's, way on the edge here, it's not gonna have a very strong effect, but the closer you get, the stronger the effect on the image is. So if you put a magnet here way on the edge and it's very powerful and you put a small magnet here closer to the center but along the same axis you can produce the same effect so with small magnets towards the center you can do everything you need to do so if you have a large larger magnet you're gonna have to move smarter uh, you'll have to move uh, farther out and so I'm gonna tell my dad well I'm just gonna demonstrate to you guys what these do and I'll have to actually try to correct this a, a little bit later, but I'll tell him move the magnet around and he'll put it probably somewhere in this region here Because it's close to the deflection yoke that's magnetized He'll put it around here and I'll tell him move it around and then we'll just see what it does on the image and you find a spot Typically these are used to correct corner issues And you're like, okay, that makes the corner a little better and then you can also wrote I'll tell him rotate it and he can Let me pull it up here See, you can rotate it like this way and each face of the magnet is going to produce a different effect and then I can tell him to even spin it and you can spin the magnet and have a different effect I say that but I was just messing with it now I'm spinning it was not doing much but that's what we're gonna try and do with these square magnets and then with these so this is like I said earlier it's a piece of paper with the magnet glued at one end 
and then double-sided tape at the other. And this works on the same principle that the closer you get to the deflection yoke with the magnet, the more change you can produce. So if you actually get way underneath it in there like this, it's gonna have a very strong effect because it's so close it. to the center. So they're basically doing the same thing of these magnets glued to the tube. And because we're getting so close to the center, you need a very, you only need a little tiny magnet on there. And then the other side has uh, double-sided tape so that once you get it where you want it, say we want it right there, then we just peel back the tape and then push it and stick it on. And I mean, this tube's dirty, right? So before you like stick it on, you're gonna, like you get it where you want it, you're gonna wanna clean the glass. Okay, so my dad's behind the, the TV with the, with the magnet. Go ahead and leave it off for now, dad. And he has the magnet in a spot that's affecting this corner. And that's what magnets do is they affect the edges of the screen. You can affect the center or the, excuse me, the top center um, or the corner or the outer center, like over here, like the outer left or the bottom center based on where you put the magnet. So we're, where he's got the magnet right now, he's gonna affect this area. So go ahead and move it around, Dad. Just move it in circles. You see how he's pulling and distorting it and it's changing color. So you can affect purity issues. Like you see how it's green. If you have like a spot that like stays green on your screen, you can put a magnet there to correct it. Or you can like pull geometry a certain way, which we might end up doing because uh, like we got that dip issue with the TV. We can try and pull it with this magnet. So go ahead and set the magnet down in one spot and just hold it there, Dad. And then rotate the face of the magnet so a different face is touching the glass. So if you just flip the magnet, it'll produce different effects. Go ahead and flip it another face because you have four sides that are touching the screen. And then another one. And th this is just him with the magnet in one spot, but flipping which face of the magnet touches the screen. Um, okay, try holding it in one spot and, and just spinning the magnet, like rotating it like a clock hand. And let's see if that does anything. Doesn't seem to be doing much. Oh, are you? Okay, yeah, it's doing something. So those are the three ways you can use a magnet. Um, we're gonna move on and uh, we'll use some convergence strips. Okay, so my dad's back there with a convergence strip and it should be affecting this corner of the screen. It's a fairly weak magnet, so it's not gonna do a whole lot, but go ahead and start uh, feeding it in and moving it around, dad. So you see how it's kind of pulling the screen one way or the other? That's what those do. Go ahead and move it around some more. Let me see this. So you got to feed it way in there. So you see, you see it'll affect the convergence a little bit and it'll pull the corner around. And you just move it around until you get what you like. And you kind of use these convergence strips and magnets like once you're done to try to fine tune the corners. All right, gonna show you guys a couple more things here. Um, if you got a TV, like a JVC D series, and you're not able to adjust the tilt in the menu or in the service menu, you can actually physically grab this whole yoke here and twist it. And that will do the same thing. And I have done that on multiple JVC monitors. If you do that, you got to unscrew like the neck board, like there's a screw right there. And you got to let this thing spin freely or you'll snap the, you'll snap the neck board. Um, I got a TV before from a smoker and I could hear arcing ha happening underneath the anode cap here. And it would go tick, 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 and I could hear it arcing as I played. And I've heard that it's a common issue. And all you gotta do is pull off this anode cap. I mentioned that they were smoker because I'm thinking because of the smoke like dried out the tube or something. Maybe that's crazy talk, I don't know. But what you gotta do 
is you got to get underneath that anode cap and add some dielectric grease. I mean, you can get it at like a an auto parts store. I had some sitting over here. What did I do? Here it is. Uh, I mean, it's the same stuff you'll put on a spark plug when you're changing your spark plugs. Or I don't know. It's dielectric grease. And we're just going to put that under the anode cap. But before you do that, you got to discharge it because this thing holds a gnarly charge. A lot of Sony's will auto discharge, but I'm not going to take that chance. So you got to unplug it, make sure it's unplugged. And you make yourself, you know, a discharge tool. The idea is we're going to send the charge from the head of the screwdriver into this wire. And then I got the wire hooked up to an alligator clip. I just pinched around the metal wire and then I attached the clip to the to the ground strap here. Alternatively, if you don't have an alligator clip, you could just go to the, uh, the frame here and just uh, loosen this screw and then wrap the wire around that and tighten it. So we're gonna go for it. What you wanna, what you're doing here is getting under here and we'll be quiet and you wanna listen for it arcing. and you're just stabbing metal. And I don't hear any arcing, probably because it auto discharged. And you can see the little clip under there, I'm touching it, and it's not arcing or doing anything, so it probably auto discharged. If I hear any noise, or sometimes you'll even see an arc, um, I'll, I'll wait like 10 minutes and then I'll do this process again. On my JVC D series, I'll have to do it like three times until it doesn't arc or do anything. But right now, I'm doing this and nothing's happening. So I'm happy with pulling the cap off now. So we're just gonna grab it, pinch it, and pull it off. And doing that, it's hard to do it. I'm not very good at it. Like I have bent these clips on here when you're pinching it, like, I don't know, man. You can bend these guys. But now the, the TV, you know, is, is free. There's no electricity in it. You can mess with all the electronics if you had to pull boards off. If I'm ever going to pull a board out and do a recap, I'll, I will uh, discharge it. But you can see how there's some grease in there. Like if there's no grease in there, in fact, I'm going to put some more grease and just kind of smear it all over this. And then smear some around there and put it on. If there's no grease on there, you'll hear it arcing. All right, so this is the finished product and I'm happy with it. We got the geometry much improved. If you look at the top, there's almost no bowing up there, down here. That uh, dip on the whole left side of the screen is largely gone now. There are some new issues with geometry, like over here, there's a little bit of a curve to it. And this corner ended up dipping. I ended up putting a magnet over here that largely helped this corner because this corner did dip. We ended up messing around with the magnet for a while. Didn't use any convergence strips, but we did use one magnet in that corner, which we basically got the whole thing dialed in. We did um, focus first, and then we adjusted the uh, convergence everywhere improve the convergence. It's still off a little. In fact, it's almost off all over the whole screen a little bit more. It's hard to tell. It's the vertical convergence is maybe a little bit off, but over here where it was really bad, it's improved. The horizontal convergence is about perfect now. There is a little bit of a red line below still, but that green line is gone. And yeah, I'm really happy with it actually, it, it, it is improved. So you can get kind of locked in looking at a, you get like, I don't know what the word for it is, but you'll spend so much time looking at the grid that you'll mess, you'll, your game won't look as good. Or like I said, you'll make so many adjustments when you go to like a, um, 
a scroll test, the scroll test will look whack. So we're gonna do a scroll test now. If I can get it to scroll. And it looks really good. I'm not seeing any warping. I actually think I did see a little bit of warping on this image here. Maybe a tiny bit of waviness, but I'm not even sure if that's true. So if I'm not sure, then I'm calling it good. Because if you have bad warping on the screen, you're not going to miss it with this type of scroll test here. So I'm going to pull up a game and uh, make sure that that looks good. Okay, so we loaded a game and this is an improvement. We did trade a couple problems for other problems, but I'll take my new problems over my old ones. It's much more square image. Like you'll notice there is like a little bow here now that we didn't have before, but all of that bowing is gone. We did improve the convergence on the far right. And like before, when I was on this bridge, this bridge bowed a lot right here. Now, if you look, there's a tiny bit of bowing over here, but it's, I mean, you gotta really look. It looks quite flat. So we were able to improve this TV. Uh, hopefully you can watch this video and improve your own TV. All right, bye guys.